My name is Patrick Boyle. I'm a finance professor at King's College London and at Queen Mary University of London, where I teach the financial derivatives class to Masters in Finance students. Okay, so in today's video we're going to learn about how we price financial futures. If you're new to derivatives, take a look at my other videos that firstly explain what derivatives are, what futures are, and so on. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to learn about other derivatives, things like option swaps, credit derivatives. Uh, these videos are all based on my book, which is called Trading and Pricing Financial Derivatives, and that's available on Amazon.com. If you're really interested in the topic, it might be worth taking a look at that. It's also available in a lot of libraries. I've put an Amazon link in the description below if you're interested. Okay, so let's dig into today's topic, pricing futures. Rather than me going straight into a formula, the way I like to explain this is to talk a little bit about the intuition behind how a future price might be determined. So we'll start with, uh, we'll start imagining that we have no formula whatsoever and we've no idea what the fair price of a futures contract should be. We're going to imagine no formula exists and we can't just quickly Google it and answer our question. We need, um, we need to just work out based on, uh, you know, intuition by looking at prices what a fair price might be or not. So we'll say that we know right now that the price of a, an underlying share is $40 and that futures are available in the market on that stock. So what do we do? Well, the first thing you'd probably do is call up your futures broker and you'd say to them, well, you know, can you give me a futures price for, for this stock that, that we know is trading at $40 right now? And so we'll imagine the futures broker comes back to you and says that you can sell a futures contract on that stock with a price of $43 and that that contract is going to expire in three months time. So that's some useful information I suppose. And finally we'll imagine that you know what the interest rates are in the marketplace right now and in, in our example we're going to say that interest rates are at 5%. So how can we know if this $43 price is a fair price or not for, for a futures contract. Well, the share costs 40 right now, we do know that. And so what we could do is we could borrow $40 at 5% for three months and we could use that money to buy one share uh, in, in that underlying. What we then could do is we could sell a futures contract on one share which would leave us with a hedged position, right? Because we own one share, which we paid 40 for, and we've entered into a legally binding agreement to sell that share to someone else at $43 in three months' time. So no matter what happens at expiration, we're going to be paid $43 for that share that we did just buy for $40 right now. Um, we'll be handing over that share to our counterparty, receiving $43. Now, because we borrowed the money to do this transaction, we owe our bank some interest on the $40 we borrowed. So we owe our bank $40 times e to the 0.05% times 3 over 12. The reason it's 3 over 12 is it's 3 months out of the 12 months in the year. And when we run that calculation, we, we come to $40.50. So this transaction would have earned us $43, which is what we're going to receive um, for, f due to our contract, minus $40.50, which is what it cost us to buy that stock and to, to pay the interest on that loan. So $43 minus $40.50 gives us $2.50 per contract. So we seem to have made a profit of $2.50 in, in this deal. Now, we'll stop at this point and explain why we borrowed the money because a lot of people often get confused by that idea. Why do we owe this 50 cents in interest to the bank? Maybe, for example, you already have the $50 sitting around in, in your back pocket. 
The reason that we have to take the interest rate into account is because we have to charge ourselves for the use of capital. Had we not entered into this transaction, that $40 would have sat in a bank account for three months and earned us that 50 cents in interest. So in finance, we always take into account the interest rate um, because a dollar received today is worth more than a dollar received well out in the future. So the transaction in, in this example would have earned us $43 minus $40.50, which was $2.50 a contract. If we had the opportunity, we should definitely do this trade, right? Because it's, it seems to be a risk-free profit. And we should probably do it in as great a size as, as is possible. The counterparty would have been losing money and the exact same amount of money as we happen to make on that transaction. So what they would have to do is they would have to adjust their, fu their futures price quickly to fair value in order really to avoid bankruptcy. Now, we don't still have a formula, but we've worked out that $43 is not a fair price. It's not a reasonable price. So let's try again. Let's use another price. So once again, the share price is $40 and futures are available in the market on that stock. So you call up your futures broker again, but this time they tell you that you can buy a futures contract on that stock with a price of $39 and that that contract will expire in three months time. Once again, interest rates are 5%. So is this a fair price? Well, once again, the share costs 40 right now. In this example, we could sell that share short for $40. We'd receive that $40 and put it in the bank and we'd earn interest on it for three months. Now, without even running the calculation, we know that with that 5% interest rate, as we did our calculation the last time, that we would, in this case, be earning 50 cents in income. Anyhow, let's move along. At the same time, we could buy a futures contract, right? So we're short the stock and we're buying a futures contract which will hedge us on one share in this example. And that leaves us with a hedged position where we're short one share, which we've been paid 40 for, and we've entered a legally binding agreement to buy that share back to cover our short position. And we've agreed to buy it back at $39 in three months time. Um, which is the contract expiration. So no matter what happens to the share price between now and maturity, we're going to be buying one share from our counterparty for $39 and receiving $40 back from the bank plus the 50 cents of interest earned over the three month period. So this calculation would earn us $40.50 minus $39, which comes to $1.50. So we'll have made $1.50 per contract. So once again, if you had the opportunity to, to trade at that price, you should do it, and you should obviously do it in as many contracts as possible. The counterparty will, of course, have losses equal to our profits once again, and they would have to adjust their futures price quickly to fair value in order to avoid bankruptcy. And that's actually something that would happen quite naturally in the market, because if the price of the futures was out by that amount, there'd be an awful lot of people buying the futures, there'd be an awful lot of people selling the underlying against it, and the buying price would be driver, the buying pressure would be driving up the price of the futures, and the selling pressure would be pushing down the price of the underlying until they actually moved to fair value. So hopefully by now, you've probably worked out what the fair value of this futures contract is. It's $40.50, right? So we don't have a formula, but we just look at what would happen in the various scenarios and we're able to work out the fair value of a futures contract. So let's now actually just look at the formula. The formula is F0, which is the price of the futures right now at time zero, equals S0, which is the price of the underlying, the spot price, at time zero or right now, times E to the RT. E in that number is what's called Euler's number, which is a mathematical constant, a bit like pi. 
and Euler's number is 2.718 and then it kind of continues on forever a bit like pi. Now that number is built into most financial calculators and that will allow you to calculate continuously compounded interest very easily. Um, we're going to be using that number and that, form, that type of formula and we'll be using continuously compounded interest for most of our derivatives calculations in the upcoming videos. If you don't already own a financial calculator and need one, there are two calculators that I would recommend and I've put links to them below in the description. They're not necessarily better than any other financial calculators, but they are the ones that are allowed for the CFA exams. And many people studying finance find themselves doing those exams. So why buy one calculator now and then find that you need to buy another one later? Of the two, I slightly prefer the Texas Instruments one, um, but they really are very similar. So just check out the Amazon reviews before getting one. Okay, so that is our basic formula, anyhow, for, for finding the fair value of futures and forwards in a perfect market. Now, the relationship between futures and spot prices depends only on the above formula in, in uh, a perfect market. But in the real world, there are various issues such as transaction costs, different borrowing and lending rates, restrictions on short selling, and things like that that prevent complete arbitrage. Thus, in the real world, the futures price varies within arbitrage boundaries around the theoretical price. So in our next video, we're going to look at exceptions to the above formula. So for example, how do we deal with an asset that has storage costs or an asset that has cash flows associated with owning it? Um, how do we deal with an asset that can't be borrowed or an asset where there's a shortage of that asset mid-contract life? Luckily, we're able to make small modifications to our formula to take all of these exceptions into account. Make sure you watch that video next. Hopefully you found this one helpful. Um, if you've made it this far, you probably have, so please hit the like button below. Um, subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Do tell your friends about them as well if they're also studying finance. Um, there'll be lots more videos coming out soon. Um, also do comment below and let me know if there are any other financial topics that you'd like me to cover in this series. Have a great day. Bye.